Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at 5.3 liter cam upgrades, and we're going to decide, hey, what's the best cam for your 5.3 liter? Is it the stock cam, that's basically the smallest kind of cam that you could put in there, or is it the biggest cam that you could put in there, or is it somewhere between? Okay guys, what do you say? Let's jump right in and take a look at the different cam offerings from Brian Julie Racing. Obviously, we can't take a look at all of them, but we're going to show some popular ones that we ran on a 5.3. And the nice thing about this is, although we're covering the cams from Brian Julie Racing, because I've run a bunch of those, you can also take a look at the specs on these and go, hey, look, you know, if this is a 220 cam and I've got a 220 cam, you know, we're going to get close on what the camshaft is actually going to do. And what I want to do is show you the differences, starting with the stock cam, and then we'll go up to like a Truck Norris cam, the hot rod cam, and the, and the red hot cam and stuff, and show you where you stop getting gains and what crossover points and all that stuff. So lots of good stuff. So let's take a look. We started off with a 5.3 liter. This particular one was an L33. This was an aluminum motor that I got from the wrecking yard. Way back, uh, it, it had the L33 is an aluminum block. It had 799 heads on it. It had flat top pistons, you know, from the 4.8. This is like the, the HO version. It had a slightly milder or slightly bigger camshaft than the LM7s that we normally pick. It had the Gen 3 early truck intake manifold and throttle body on it. We ran it with inch and 7 eighths headers and 18 inch collector extensions. We put 80 pound injectors in it only so because we were going to later run the stuff with turbos, which we did and, the, and it worked great, obviously. We also had the Holly HP management system so we could dial in the air fuel and timing and all that stuff. We ran it with a Mazir electric water pump the way that we always do, so no accessories and stuff on it. That's why these things make more power than they do, than they're rated at, because the way that we're testing them is different than the way that they test them from the factory. But when we ran this combination, we ran it with first with a stock camshaft that came with the L33. And again, this was just an L33 that I got from the wrecking yard. <laughs> we put oil in it. We put it up on the dyno. It had a couple hundred thousand miles on it. And when we did that, run with long tube headers and no accessories on an optimized tune. This thing made 364.7 horsepower, 365 horsepower, and peak torque checked in at 388, 389.1 foot-pounds of torque. See, you know, it's making more torque than horsepower, pretty typical of kind of a stock LS combination. Here's what happened when we put the Truck Norris camshaft in. It's a very popular cam. And this particular one that I'm going to show you, we started off with a Truck Norris NSR cam. So what that is, is a camshaft, it's the Truck Norris cam, but it's a low lift version. So you can run it with 500 lift springs. The springs that come on most 4.8 and 5.3 and 6.0 cylinder heads. Now some of the other heads like the LS3, LS6, some of the Recport heads, the LY6 stuff come with 550 lift springs, which you can run the bigger Truck Norris cam. But I wanted to show you both of them because a lot of guys would pick this that, that way that they don't have to buy springs. That combination produced 420 point, <coughs> excuse me, 0.6 horsepower and 416.7 foot-pounds of torque. And when we ran the higher lift version, the regular Truck Norris cam, the power was up a little bit. The peak power was up to 420... 424.2 horsepower peak torque didn't really change uh 417 foot pounds of torque so the the higher lift version one of them is a 550 lift one of them is a 500 lift so the the added lift of the normal truck norris cam is worth about six horsepower six or seven horsepower on this combination and the guys from brian tooley racing have verified that in their own testing so now let's take a look and see what happens when we go up even farther on cams. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the stock cam, the, the NSR cam, and the regular Truck Norris camshaft, let's take a look and see what happens when we step up the camshaft even more. And now we're going to go up to the hot rod cam, which really is the BTR's next cam, you know, uh, up in our sequence and one of the ones that we ran on this 5.3 beer. So let's take a look and see what happens when we put that up. This is our combination with the stock one. We made 365-ish and then with the 
truck Norris cam, we were up in the 424, 425 range. Here's what happened when we installed the hot rod cam. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the specs up for both of the camshafts for the truck Norris cam. We'll take a look at that, and then I'll go ahead and put the specs up for the hot rod cam. And you can guys can kind of see, you know, it's about a five degree jump up in intake duration. But what I'm going to do is let's get rid of our stock cam here for just a second so we can directly compare the hot rod cam to the truck Norris cam. You can see the low the the truck Norris cam down low makes more power up to about 47 4800 and then there's a crossover so below that point the truck Norris cam makes more torque than the hot rod cam but above that point certainly above 4900 or so 48 4900 the hot rod cam makes more power run with the hot rod cam our 5.3 liter made almost 450 horsepower uh, 449.5 horsepower peak torque was actually about the same they made almost identical peak torque numbers you know we're, we're looking at 416 or so 415 right in that range it's just that the hot rod cam pushed power production out higher in the rpm range compared to the truck norris cam so the question is you know where do you want your power production do you want your power production below 5000 do you want it above 5000 now this is an interesting comparison because we have a trade-off of about 30 horsepower <laughs> and 30 foot pounds of torque so it's kind of an even trade again this is it's just going to be determined on like what application you're putting these on for a truck application for towing that kind of thing maybe daily driver maybe you want the low speed power you know if you're really racing around want all the performance you got a stall converter in it maybe you want the extra horsepower on top again it didn't, whichever one you want this is what they do but let's take a look really quick and we're going to go ahead and put our stock cam back in and let's show you what would happen not as a comparison to the to the truck Norris cam, but as a comparison to the stock cam. So if you put the hot rod cam in compared to the stock cam, we're going from 365 horsepower up to 449, 450 horsepower. And then the hot rod cam is basically better than the stock cam. It's even at about 3,500 and up. So if you put some sort of stall converter in this thing, you're going to have basically the same or more power all the way up. So again, this kind of camshaft list all converter is a good idea. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we did our final test. This was a red hot cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up for the red hot cam. But this is interesting. And I wanted to show you that the red hot cam, despite the fact that it's a 221 cam versus 217 for the hot rod cam, is only a little bit better than the hot rod cam. And it's only a little bit better you know, at higher RPM. Again, the peak torque is within one or two foot pounds of each other. The uh, Red Hot Cam made 454 horsepower. So it's up, you know, we'll call it four or five. And it's really only better from about 5,400 on up. So again, if you're, you know, doing high RPM stuff, but note that it's already past the power peak. Now, if you combine that camshaft with an intake manifold that, that wanted to run more RPM, you probably could take advantage of what that cam had to offer. But on a 5.3, the truck Norris cam and the hot rod cam are, are pretty much, I think, what people are going to be deciding with. And which one of those you want is going to be dependent on, you know, how much power you want to make and where you want to make it. The, the red hot cam at least on this 5.3, didn't really seem to be that good of a choice. It lost a little bit of power down low and gained a little bit of power up top compared to the hot rod cam, but not a big change there. So let's take one final look at another comparison between the hot rod cam and the red hot cam, but on something that's making more power. Okay, guys, let's take a look at a final comparison between the BTR hot rod cam and the BTR red hot cam, this time on the 5.3 but after we've made some changes to it and it now makes more power. So if we take a look at this, this is our combination. We have our L33, the aluminum 5.3 liter, but now we have replaced the factory 799 heads with a set of TFS ASCAS 220s that the guys from Brian Truly Racing also did a bunch of porting on. So they're no longer ASCAS, they're ported versions of the TrickFlow 220 heads and they flow a ton. We also have a fast LSXR intake manifold, 102 millimeter throttle body. So now the combination has 
you know, basically more intake flow with a better intake manifold, also more head flow, so the ability to make a lot more power. So let's compare our two camshafts again, the BTR hot rod cam and the BTR tri or the BTR red hot camshaft and see how they compare on a combination that should want more cam timing and therefore make more power. So this is our combination with the hot rod cam. And you can see our 5.3, our junkyard 5.3, still a junkyard stock bottom end, making good power and made over 500 flywheel horsepower, 500.7, I think was the peak here. Yeah. And peak torque checked in at 440 foot-pounds of torque. <coughs> you can see this is a good combination. A 5.3 making 500 horsepower is a pretty solid deal. But you can see it took a, a good cam, good cylinder heads, and a good intake manifold, along with our long tube headers and an optimized tune with our Holly HP management system. Here is what happened when we put the Red Hot camshaft on here under the same conditions and you can see like it did when we had the stock heads on there and the stock intake manifold on there the red hot cam does make more power than the hot rod cam in this case it did from about 6,000 rpm on up it ended up producing a peak of 512 horsepower so you're looking at you know 10 11 horsepower better with the red hot cam compared to the hot rod cam but again, it just it didn't make too much of a difference through much of the curve. And there was maybe a little bit of loss down here below 5,000 RPM, although we started our load at a different point. I would expect to see some losses, you know, down at 3,000 or 3,500 on the bigger Red Hot Cam compared to the Hot Rod Cam. But it was worth a little bit of power. So, you know, an extra 10 horsepower on the top. If that's where you're wanting to rev it, we ran this thing all the way out to 7,000 RPM. And on that, what is still a long runner fast manifold, it did very, very well. So there you have it. You guys can decide which cams you would pick. And now if you take a look at any camshafts that have specs in between the stock cam or the truck Norris cam or the hot rod cam or the red hot cam, you should have a pretty good idea what they'll do. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I'll keep testing.